kind of launch in. All right, so to start with the basics, what is a group? A group is a way to gather information that's repeated. And the idea is by um, using a group, what you can do is avoid typing the same question over and over again or copying and pasting and making really minor changes if what you're really doing is trying to get the same kind of data about something twice. It's especially helpful if you don't know up front exactly how big your group is going to be when you write your interview. And most programming languages and most interview platforms like this have some feature that is similar. Just a little review from a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, lists and dictionaries, introduced those to you. So the kind of group that we're going to work with today is a list. And remember, like another way to think of a list is it's a collection of variables. Variables can be objects themselves. We're going to be using a, um, a list that has objects in it today. And the special thing about a list that makes it different from dictionary is that a list is ordered. So the, the elements have place 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the other thing is that uh, you retrieve them with that number numeric index. So like looking here at the slides, um, my rock zero tells us we're going to get the first item out of our list of rocks. The zero is the beginning of the list. Lists themselves are a type of object. Oh, here we go. So um, specifically, a list is an object that's called a CA list. That's what we're going to use in stock assemble. And um, there's this special syntax for using objects in a doc symbol interview. So that's this right here. The three dashes and then the um, object keyword, and then you can have a list underneath it of if the actual objects you want to create. So this is showing a special syntax for um, a DA list where you can tell it what type of object it's holding. And that, that's helpful for certain types of um, interviews. It's helpful for you to know up front what type of object it is. We can break this down a little bit later, but just notice here the special syntax we're using the dot. That means we're accessing some kind of method after a group member and using and what follows after this is syntax that you can use for every type of object that you're initializing in a document interview. So here we're saying the attribute that's called object type is going to get the value of individual. But you can put a comma here and add a bunch of more keyword variables, uh, arguments like this. And whatever they are, they're going to be, become attributes of the new object that you make. So that's a good thing to know, and it, it may or may not really make sense right now. but just kind of think of it as background information you can look up later and learn more about. So let's think about an individual. This is actually what the individual class looks like in Docker Simple. And we, we saw it last week. We played a little bit with um, the special legal server integration, and we used client, um, spouse, and household. So this kind of breaks down what we were doing, which was working with the individual class. Here's an example of a real individual object. So, and here underneath it are the attributes that they have. Um, and they just make sense to map onto kind of like real attributes of a person who would be in the real world with some of the things that are useful to use in a guided interview. So, an individual can have a gender, a birth date, can have a name. And um, can tell me, anyone tell me something about what 
name is? Like, what is this syntax telling you about what name is? Yep, that's definitely true. Yeah, so name itself has its own sort of sub subset. Um, yeah, it has its own attributes. Okay, oh, yep, which is that's the special language that we use for it. And specifically, it means that name is itself an object set. So objects can have attributes, and an attribute can be object. Quentin, can you just, when people talk, it's hard, we can hear you, but it's hard to hear whoever's talking. Can you just repeat what they say? Would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm going to move people a little closer to me, actually, since I'm repeating it anyway. Um, I, I think everyone kind of got the gist of that, but like what we were just talking about was what kind of thing name is, and we decided that name is itself an object. Mm -hmm. um, the same is true for address. So an address is an attribute of an individual, and an address itself can have multiple sub-attributes, Address.address .address is the like street number and uh, a name, and the other one should be pretty familiar, unit, city, state, and zip. So that's itself an object, and you can use those objects outside of an individual. They can have their own existence. You might want to think about dealing just with names. Um, like maybe you want to make a baby name generator, for example, something like that. You're collecting the names and um, in their own list. They don't have to be attached to a person. That has all these other special attributes with it. You might only care about um, something like the first, middle, and last name. So here's a question that actually asks about a, an actual individual. So I thought maybe we could start by everyone trying to put this code into their um, playground, and you can just try asking a question that gives us information about an individual. Do you have the, um, oh, the link for like the MLRI? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Can I put it on the Slack? Does that work? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Is it masslegalhelp.org, Caroline? I think yeah. that's it. It's, um, what do you have? DocAssemble dash dev. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the one. Okay. All right. So let's make a new one called um, new item in our playground called individual test or whatever you like. And I think there may be something I'm leaving off here, which you might need to include a special module here. And just to keep it simple, you can make that a mandatory field. So I'm going to try, um, let me just try saving and running it and then just make sure I'm not missing something. This looks good. And then I'll put it on the Slack so you can save a little typing. All right. Um, and then one more thing, we actually want to make some use of it. So let's make another mandatory question. That's going to be our endpoint. Don't you already have the Slack? Oh, this extra bit you just added. I'm going to add that one little part there, yeah. And, um, you know, live demo. It's always something that can go wrong here. But this should do it. We actually don't really need to make the first question mandatory.
right. Um, anybody need me to slow down? I know that was a lot that we just threw in there, but and we'll break it down a little bit too. So let's just break that down. Um, if we go back to our slide here, right, what we're doing is we're filling in just a couple attributes of an individual. So we're, we didn't bother with middle name. We didn't care about it, which you might not, often not care about. We gathered name.first, name.last, and some of the attributes of the address also. Um, so when we're referring to an object in DocAssemble, we don't really have to refer to the class name again after we initiated, initialized it. So here we had this objects block. We told DocAssemble, okay, the variable named client is going to be of type individual. And then from up, now on in the interview, we're just using client to refer to that variable that is of type individual. And then remember that dot syntax here means we're referring to something that's an attribute of that variable, that object. Instance is what it's called an in instance. And then name remembers itself an object, so we're going one level deeper. So this should be pretty straightforward, um, although we haven't worked a lot with objects before. Let's jump back into the slideshow. Okay. So if we have a list of items of whatever type that they might be, there's a special way to tell DocAssemble that our question can answer any item in the list. And we use this special variable called I. Uh, I should have made that lowercase, but. Uh, and DocAssemble lets you use these, I think it's five, I'm counting right, maybe six. Six, yep. There's six special keyword variables that you can use in your interview. And they can all, they all mean the same thing. So the reason why there's multiples is you can have nested lists. So you can have a list of lists and you can go down up to six levels deep. That shouldn't be needed very often, but it's possible for you to do that. Like let's say you're um, collecting a list of, of people and each person can have its own set of household members. For example, that's two levels deep. Um, maybe you also wanna have each household member have a list of their favorite foods, and their, and their foods can have recipes and ingredients that they have, right? So you, that, that's kind of the idea. So you can still have one question that asks about all those things at once if you wanted to. And that's what I, J, K, L, M, and N could do. But normally, you're going to want to use I, because it's the one everyone will recognize what it means in your interview. Um, and remember our bracket syntax to access an item in a list. So by putting the bracket here next to the household variable, and then I, that means we're accessing item I in our list named household. And that position in the list is going to get filled with named up first and get filled with whatever the person types into the interview and so on. You can actually refer to the variable I on its own. So I just showed you here like what that looks like. And there's a, there's a way to do it that's a little bit more um, useful for the person looking at your interview that we'll talk about too. So right now, like let's say we're at the first item in our list. Can anyone tell me what I, the value is going to be without the first item? Is it going to be zero or is it going to be one? It's going to be zero. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you don't you don't initialize I. I just be, as soon as I mean just by using I it it comes initialized at, at zero. Exactly, it's kind of a placeholder that DocAssemble will replace it with something real, and mm -hmm. it, it's uh, yeah. So when you go so this through, is what you're yeah go ahead sorry. 
Well, I just want to say this is just what the question will look like, basically. And there's more background we'll go into about how to construct the list and how to before we can actually copy and paste this code and, and look at it a little closer. So, what was your question, Caroline? Um, so, so does Doc assemble then when you know, sort of like hot docs? But would you have client zero and all their information? So, or or household household zero name first would be Quinton. Household one name, it would be household zero. So you you would have a zero value, or does when you say doc assemble, as soon as you put an answer in, does the does the i the first value of i become one? Do you see what I mean? Your list. If you wanted to refer oh. to somebody, if you wanted to refer to an an object in your list, um, uh -huh. or an individual in your list, or household member in your list. If you referred to the first one, would they be zero or would they be one? They would be zero. Okay. So it, it's a computer science thing that doesn't make a lot of sense mm -hmm. um, if they were starting over again, probably. But the first item in the list in computer science is generally zero. Okay. Yeah, it's just kind of like a legacy thing. All right. Okay, I'll let and, you But the other question you asked, I think, is worth. <laughs> like explaining more too. So the other part is like, how do you refer to an item later elsewhere? So yes, you could, you could keep track of, well, what number am I on? And then display that item using the bracket syntax again. So if we replace the I with zero, or, you know, one, two, three, four, whatever, it will display the zero, whatever, nth number in our list, item in that list. So uh, one way we could do our questions is we could get rid of the I, say, okay, question zero, for item zero gets its own question, item one gets its own question, item two gets its own question, and so on. You could do that. Um, but it, there's probably not really good reason mm -hmm. to, to ever do that. And I'll show you a way to retrieve items from the list. So actually, we don't tend to need to know the index of the list very much. Like, it's kind of a difference between hot docs hot dog, you do kind of need to keep track of the index. Mm -hmm. um, there are better ways to work with lists and to display them in DocAssemble. Okay, so um, I'm gonna jump in a little bit more into like how to use groups more generally. So, and then we'll circle back and do a little bit more typing or more, more code you can try out. But let's just think in general about what we're doing when we're trying to collect a group. There are a couple things we want to know. So is the group empty or not? So you might, when you're writing a question, let's stick with concrete. You're wanting to know about how many children somebody has, and you want to gather information about their children. Sometimes they don't have any children. So you need to know, first of all, are there even any children? We're going to go on the list. Uh, we might want to know how many items there are, too. How many children do they have? You can collect information in DocAssemble about a, a list, whether you know upfront or not. You don't have to know upfront, but sometimes that's the best, most usable way to gather the information. And then finally, um, let's say we didn't know upfront how many items there were gonna be. We have to tell DocAssemble, okay, hey, we're done collecting items. You don't need to keep asking more questions about this. We already have all the people we need to know about. So I'm going to explain to you some special attributes of a DA list, which are used to help you with that process. I think we can skip this. Um, there's one more thing that DocAssemble sometimes can figure out on its own, and sometimes you need to give it a, a little bit of help. But with the, when working with the individual class, I don't think we need to do this. It will always ask for the name. Um, but if you wanted to gather information about individuals and you want DocAssemble to ask about everything about the first person first before it moves on to the second person, you use this special attribute, which is called complete attribute. And that's kind of a hint to DocAssemble that says, okay, don't go on to the next person until you've gotten everything in this attribute at least is filled in. I won't explain it because I don't think we're going to need it for the rest of the demos and it's already a little bit dense topic. But now you've seen the syntax once and it gives you a little bit of context for it. 
Another thing we're not going to spend a lot of time on because we're only going to do today's example one way is using the auto gather attribute. And by the way, even though they're in the caption here capitalized, all of these attributes are completely lowercase. Um, normally with a list, you want to use auto gathering. There's an option to not let doc assemble ask the questions on its own, you want to force it to do certain questions a certain way, um, or you want to use a code block to fill in your list, then you can turn off auto gathering. But we're going to use auto gathering for the example today. If you do turn off auto gathering, then you have to set this other attribute called gathered to true when you're done filling in the list. And you do this in your code block, right? For the interview? Yep. Okay. In a code block, yeah. I mean, you could ask a question that says gathered, I guess. Mm -hmm. You could have that filled in by a question that's a, a yes, no variable. But you would normally do it in a code block. Okay. So these are the ones that we're going to, I, I think we're going to start with this, and you can kind of give me feedback about this. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the, nor the default way to gather items in a list. We use these two variables. Um, I think the first one is there are any. We might even use that the other method. So let me actually double check that. But so there are any tells us the list has at least one item. So it's like the equivalent for our example of do you have any children? We want to know that up front before we start asking how many kids do you have. At least it's its own question in Doc Assemble. And then if the answer is um, true. There's one way for us to use the interview is we can ask after each person is gathered, ask, hey, do you have another kid? And which way to, to choose to do this? You probably do this when you don't, when the person doesn't really think about the cardinality of whatever group you're talking about up front. Like if they have a number in their head, that's great. You can ask from them for the number. But Sometimes you want to kind of prompt them and say, hey, is there really nothing else you, you, you have? So like a, a good example might be household expenses. Like you don't really think about, I have 20 household expenses. <laughs> but you might want to ask them once they've already listed a bunch of them, like, do you have another expense? Are you sure there's not anything else? But if you're asking them about jobs, they do know how many jobs they have. They know how many kids they have. And that's a little bit more natural most of the time. And this is the, the clue that tells Doc Assemble that you're all done gathering your list. So once there is another set to false, then it means you're all done and you don't have to keep collecting items. So I, this, I think, is a, a good way for you to learn. It's, it's maybe the simplest. So we'll do an example with this using the, the ask number attribute. Ask number is um, a true or false. It says instead of using one at a time, hey, do you have another thing to add to the list? Ask the person up front how many items are going to go on the list. And then if we do that approach of, of asking up front how many items are in the list, then we can set this value, target number, to be the size of the list. So an example again, how many children do you have? And we need to tell that assemble a hint that it's going to be a number. Otherwise, it's going to be the wrong thing. All right, so let actually, let's actually try this out now. And let's make a new, let's see. Just gonna just hop on to, I had one of these as an example, it's already kind of built here. So, um, okay, it looks like it has some kind of fun code in there that I have to get rid of. Okay. All right. 
right, so let's make a new file. I'm going to be the first person that's going to use the is there another approach. So um, I'm actually going to cut out some of this. Actually, build this together. So let's copy and you can keep your first code if you want to copy and paste what you had in the other interview. Keep the, the modules, keep the object. Actually, did well, let me copy and paste this part on there for you and then let's type it together. So you have that first part. So again, let's go over it. So we're including a couple of modules. I don't think we need both of these. I think that just the dot util would be enough. We're telling DocAssemble we're going to use an object. And then we're using a special syntax to tell DocAssemble that the object type is going to be people, individuals. And then our first question here is, do you have any children? All right, so we are um, using a yes, no type of question. So I don't know if, if you remember this, um, but there, there are a couple of different ways to do fields. And one way you use these special keywords, there's only a couple of them. One of them is yes, no, if the only question is gonna be a yes, no variable. But the other option we could have done here is set create a field block. And then what would we do next? Here. Yeah, so the, the answer was like just put on yes, no on the, on the next line, which is right. So we want to have that be the data type. And we do need to set a question here too, if we do it that way. So basically, if the only thing your question is gonna be doing is asking one thing, then the other syntax is a little bit easier to read. Okay, let's stick with that. So um, we could make that a mandatory question, just run it and make sure there's no syntax errors. All right. So we should get this, it's not gonna do anything next. Now let's try writing a question that actually shows that list of kids. You can tell me what you think will happen when we do it. First of all, anyone have a guess about how we actually display our list of children? What was your question, Kendall, um, Clinton? Yeah, so how will we actually show our list of children? Anyone have a guess? Display them, you mean? Yep. So I wrote a question here, and I want to list out our kids. How, oh, how would I do that? Children.name, or clot, yeah, just be children, right? Yeah, we could just actually type children here. Doc Assemble will help us with that. So it will actually display each item. It's going to show the name of the kid and it's gonna use um, a comma to separate them. That's the default way it displays Does it, because you're using that object type individual, um, mm -hmm. which asks, does, it, doesn't, does that ask all the questions? I mean, the, when you put that DA list using object type individual, when you say display the children, does it display all the, like the names and the addresses and everything of all the children when you, when you 
display the children that way or just the name? No, it will it only would display the name, but you raise an important point. We're still missing some questions here. Right. Like we don't have a question that actually gives us any information about the kid. Yet. So I just want to show you like what will happen, I guess, once we do that. Can't use mandatory okay. modifiers. Not the one I was thinking would happen. I put a question instead of question. Oh. That was the problem. Oh. So this gives us a clue. Uh, so in order for it to display a list of children, it needs to know at least the first child. And the attribute it's looking for is at least the first thing it's looking for is children zero dot name dot first. So it hasn't asked so it doesn't ask those questions automatically. Yeah. It, it does not do it automatically. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, there are ways to um, kind of fill in default questions. And um, well, that's probably something that we should do to help save some time for people. But for now, we're going to do it from scratch so you understand it. Okay. So what, do you, what should we ask about? I think let's keep it simple and just ask about um, names. So let's write a question here. If I want to tell us where we are in the list, what would I type here? Where you are in the list? Right. Yes. Yeah, we don't, and it's going to be just the regular old curly brackets okay. because we're not, um, it's a freestanding variable on its own. And so, like, we're, we're, the brackets are telling us we're at item i in, when we're cutting that particular variable. Okay. So, um, what would we want to put underneath here? What are the fields we're going to need to fill in? Name, well, name for, it's children.name.first. Okay. And Anybody else? Sure. Anything missing? Anything missing? Oh, do you need to do the? Yep. Yeah. So Lena just said we need the the I there. I yeah. Yeah. All right, anyone predict what will happen if you run it now? We haven't, we're not displaying, oh, are we displaying the, the next question displays the children, right? You have an extra, do you have an extra line on 19? Do you have to, I had a problem with that, I thought, is that I had an extra space? I don't know if that'll cause a problem. No, it shouldn't cause a problem. Okay. That's a good thing to notice though, but some places it could. Sometimes what happens is like you hit enter and then like if there was a space there, that would cause a problem. But that's really easy to do by mistake. Yeah. Because sometimes it tries to automatically indent something for you if it's not supposed to. Um, okay, well, let's just run it and see. Anybody want me to um, copy and paste our progress so far? In the Slack? Okay. Just to help you catch typos. Okay, 
Right, and Will, you'd already suggested we take the middle name, make it optional. So anyone, can anybody remember from the slides? I know this was the first time you saw the concept, but um, why are we getting there? Reference to children, there is another. Mm -hmm. Where is that coming from? So if you remember from the slides here, this explains that variable. So is that so that is that required? So I'm a little confused because all we, we did is there is any. So do groups require right. answers to all of these? They do not need a, a, a definition of all of these. You can kind of choose your set. There's two paths to take, mm -hmm. which can be a little confusing. So if you if you take the path of ask using the there is there are any, then you need to ask, also ask the question there is another. Oh, I point, see. Right? Gotcha. All right. Right. Otherwise, it doesn't know when to stop right. gathering. So Will just said it needs to know when that variable is false. Mm -hmm. So that's how it knows this is done. Um, but I, I just showed you that just because the variables, the error messages, first time you see them are just like kind of confusing gobbledygook. Right. But so you can look through and see this is the variable that never got defined that we need to define. So, so basically it's saying you put in, are there any? Um, mm -hmm. So then you also need to put in, if you put in, are there any, then that's the, basically that's the, that's the reference and that isn't yeah. answered, right? Okay. Exactly. Yep. Exactly right. So it's going to be pretty similar to this question. Do you have any kids? We're going to make it a yes, no question again. It's just asking one thing. And if you're not sure about the thing that's missing, you can always copy it, which is what I did here. Uh, children, there is another. Right, let's try it now. Yeah. Okay, let me go back to the code so you can see. And I can put that on the slide. Got it? Okay. All right. And we can try um, adding another person. Call this. All right, so that is um, that's the, that's kind of like the smallest interview and simplest <laughs> one that uses the, the least number of questions or techniques for DocSymbol. If you want to gather things in the list, um, anybody have a question about any of this so far? Because it, it's a little dense and it's a lot of kind of unfamiliar ways of of dealing with things even. Okay, we don't, don't have to. All right, I'm going to show you one other, basically think of it as a recipe. You can customize it for what you want. Let's copy this code into a new file here. And I'll show you the way which I think you should also know. Again, it's going to be just kind of a recipe here. All right. So we're going to change a couple of things about our object declaration first. What we're going to do is to ask 
the person who's running the interview up front how many kids they have. Can anyone remember the variable name that we use for that? The attribute name? Isn't that the yeah. target? Yeah, sorry. Well, Lena just said ask number. Ask yeah, number. Right. Yeah. So we can specify that right in our object initialization here. Mm -hmm. We just put a comma there, and then we put in that, another, that other attribute. And remember what this dot using thing, it's kind of a, a little uh, funny looking syntax. All it does is tell doc assemble that what comes afterwards is going to be um, added as an attribute of the object. Quentin, can you not do um, there are any equals true in that object definition as well or not because you need the, it also requires there is another? Absolutely, you could do that. Okay. You could definitely do that. You could even say um, there is another equals false if you want to list with one item. All right. Oh, with one yeah. item. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, you without one add, item. You have, so the, one. Right. So you have to ask the question. Yep. Right. Anything can go in here that you want to become an attribute of your new object up front. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to change this. We don't care about do you have any kids anymore. Um, oh, although I guess we could. Um, let me see. Well, you would say how many kids, and then right, and you would answer. Yes, exactly. So how many, how many children or kids? Can't use this one line syntax anymore. It's going to have to be its own field. Um, I'm going to introduce something new, right. just because it's a good time to do this. So there's a special syntax called no label. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a question that kind of looks like that one screen version where there's there's no like so what I was thinking of is right here. I already have my question at the top. How many children do you have? I'm only asking for one piece of information. Right. I don't really want to have a field again that has its own description that says how many children again. Right. It'll just be confusing. So it's going to be our variable of children, and what comes afterwards? Anybody remember that part? That's a good point too. Yeah. What attributes do we need to fill in? Well, you know, I think it's probably in your notes there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, get number. Okay. And then, Will, what comes to tell us that it's going to be in? Yeah. So we don't, if we did number, it could be have fractional part, and you can't have one. Despite what the average would tell us, <laughs> you can't have like seven kids. So it's going to have to be an integer, the whole number. I don't think this is going to get used. There are any, but let's run it and, and just see. Does the you know when you were saying initially that groups need certain information, like whether it's empty or not. So when you do that, ask number equals true. Hmm. I that, think it seems redundant, right? To say how many kids do you have and are there any kids? Well, you're asking you how say, many, you're asking if you have any first before, that makes sense, right? Do you have any? Right. Because if you don't have any, I'm not going to ask you how many you have. Right. For the, the children target number, does it not need the, the bracket with the I again? No. Good question. Um, we don't because this is an attribute not of an individual item in our list. It's an attribute of the list itself. Okay. So the I would tell it would be like oh. for one of the children. This is about the whole list of children. The number of children. Yeah. And you can have as many attributes as you like. So you can have, you can add in Python and in DocAssemble, objects aren't limited to the attributes they start out with. You can keep adding new attributes, which can be helpful sometimes because you don't have to make a new object type just because you want to start putting in more attributes that are special for your interview. But they always, um, you have to keep that in mind, the difference between the list object and then the items in the list. Those are separate things. They can each have their own attributes. So then how do you get it out of the question? Um, that is something DocAssemble handles for you. Uh, yeah. So this should be everything we need. And I just don't remember if it's going to still ask us, are there any or not? Doesn't. Okay. Well, because so you didn't, say zero. you're making that require that mandatory, right? You're not requiring that question to come first. 
Do you have any children? No, no but, it's not, there's right. no requirement to ask that, right? Correct. Yeah, and so what I was just not sure of is would Dr. Semble need to know that information? I couldn't remember. Oh. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. We still might want to ask a question like that just because it's more natural. Right. For the person. Because you probably don't say, hmm, yeah, I have children. I have zero children. <laughs> That's still a number. Okay, so it actually won't let us do this if we make use of the what's happening here. We're using the list of children, and it doesn't even ask us to fill it in unless we give it some number. So that's interesting. Probably not how it should work. But let's say we have two kids. Again, let me just put this on the slack. I don't want people to get stuck with uh, typos. What did you just do to ask for child zero's name? Oh, you put in two children, right? You put in the target, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, that's what it was. And let's put the uh, JJ here. All right. So can you, um, if you go back to your source, where you have, okay, can you put, is there a like, is it a method or a function that you can put, so basically, in your question, it could say, what is your um, ordinal? I don't know what the function would, but what is your something to go to? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, and ordinal is fun. You probably remember that from, or. Okay, okay, author. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, so, yeah, I was gonna, yeah. yeah. So a, a nicer way to ask it is to use that function. Yeah, what is your ordinal child's name? Okay, so you can use that. That is a function. That's good. Yeah. So, Will, I'm going to uh, put you on the spot. What would I do to make this not required? Uh, well, required, colon, colon. I, 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 so. Okay. Thank you, Will. So you change the thing? Okay. No problem. And that automatically changes that zero into mm -hmm. first. It knows how to deal with lists. But you said you had two children, so it's not asking you for the next child's. This time when I ran it, I know it was, it was a little quick. I just did one this time. Oh. I just wanted to show you really those two changes we made. So middle name is no longer required. Yeah. And order makes that a little bit nicer. Uh-huh. Um, and this is translated also, I believe. Right. Uh, if it's not translated already, it can be translated. So it's, you can still keep using the ordinal function. You don't have to like write like ordinal Spanish or ordinal Swedish or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can translate the words. Uh, um, Caroline, we've been talking about this for the other project and yeah. um, then it will, uh, it'll use that every place. You don't, you don't have to rewrite it in each question. Uh, so, okay, let's make this question a little bit nicer. How many children do you have? Because again, the zero is a little bit weird. Let's think about this. So there are a couple things. I'll do this part first, because this might not be intuitive. Um, okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm putting in a conditional statement and it's checking the length of our list. LEN is a function that checks the length. I think there's actually a better doc assemble function that does this. I should remember this. Then. Not function but method. So let me just check in the docs. So you're using percent if, if you're putting it in a question. If it's code, you do if, L if, and else, and don't use an end if. That, Correct. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep, that's the distinction. And then if you look at the, um, in the Slack, I'd, I'd link to that uh, blog post 
that gives you examples mostly for both, so you can kind of keep track of what what syntax to use where. Mm -hmm. So specifically with list, I have examples that have both kinds, the code block and the um, inside a sub question mm -hmm. version of the statement. And then the last thing is inside a, um, a Word document. So those three syntaxes are slightly different. And I wanted to find here, let's see, this could be confusing where it's going to be under objects or groups, but let's check. I think there's a, fun, a method that's just called dot number or something like that. Oh, so that would be the number of children, not the length of the string. Is that how that would work? Length of the list, yeah. Um, it would be the length of the list, yep, and it's dot number. So that might be a little easier to read, actually, than using that special Python function length. So I, I'll stick with that for this example. Mm -hmm. Let's run this first and just you can see what it does. Now it's not, it shouldn't ask us if we say zero. It shouldn't ask us for any of the kids' names. Okay. See, it was stuck before because we were still trying to show the list, even though the list didn't have anything in it. Mm-hmm. But instead of making oh. someone say you have zero children, let's combine these two questions. So what would I do first? When you say combine the two questions, mm -hmm. you mean make it be one question? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So Will just said make one conditional on the other. We'll go over it briefly. And I know um, we should probably finish up the next couple minutes, I guess. Yeah. Uh, think about it. So maybe this isn't the best thing to spend time on, but we'll just do it quickly. We can still use this variable, there are any, but it's not going to have the same meaning to Dr. Sunbull. Dr. Sunbull doesn't really care about it anymore. So it's going to be a yes, no. And we're going to change this no label to how many. And the keyword here is show if. Ah. So, so that I makes this. I figured out how to do yeah. this the other day. This is perfect. So it's almost, so this is what, this is how you ask. So the second question, how many, won't show up unless you say yes in the first question, but all in the same screen. Exactly. Yeah. And there's two syntaxes. So this is the one if it's a yes, no variable. If it's but if you wanted to, there's another syntax. You can say like a variable x is y. That's another alternative way to do it. And we wouldn't use this part. You'd there. say show if. Would you say show if? Or you would just? Still show if. That part's the same. Just right. a different alternate syntax for it. Cool. Okay, this is so such a cool thing. <laughs> Do you have any kids? Ah, perfect. So that's just, I just wanted to show you that. So can you just show, do you have any kids? What does that, do you have any kids look like again? Can you go back before, before, before you've checked? Oh, okay, so there's a checkbox there. Okay, right. We might want to make it instead, uh, yes, no radio. Yeah. Might look a little bit nicer. Yeah. Because we asked a yes, no question, really it probably should be, the answer should be yes or no. Right. Yeah. Shouldn't or, really be I'm not box. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you're right. We probably should account for that. <laughs> we don't want people to get stuck in the band of the interview because they don't know or they haven't done a full Exactly. What did he say? Okay. Uh, we have to account for all the Keith Richards of the world. Oh. Okay, so there is, do, do, you, do you have any children? Yes, no, I don't know. What's it to you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
absolutely, yeah, absolutely can do that. None of your business. <laughs> uh, we have like a minute or two. Not really. We kind of have a minute or two. I want to introduce you to one more thing, which can, can make this a little bit more complicated. So um, we won't mess around with complete attribute. I'm going to add a new attribute that we're going to add. To, we're going to ask about for our child. Let's ask for their gender. What are the built-in attributes of an individual? And let's give some choices. So we can say male, female, non-binary, transgender. Um, what else say? Can you do, in this question, I know you only have 20, 10 seconds left. Can you do another yeah. one of those show if? So if they said other, I know it's like this whole PC thing, whether you can say other or not, but uh -huh. this one, can you do a show if they do other and then they can describe their? We could do that, yeah. So that show if would be like. Like, my, well, say uh, my gender is not listed or something like that. Hello. Hi, 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 Barbara. Hi. We're finishing up. Okay. Oh, I forgot um, we're we'll, today. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be like this, right? Choices, and then um, we would have show if we use the other syntax variable children, children i dot gender. gender is right other and other would go in quotes this time. Right. So we could, we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, let's, so, all right. Um, I, what I wanted to show you is. Sorry. Do you mind if we take a couple minutes? For, I won't try to That's all right. I'm finishing my late lunch. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this was all kind of uh, preparatory. <laughs> in fact, I may just mute myself for a little while. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll show you, we could ask the gender now. But it's not displayed on our list anymore, right? Because right? that that um, default built-in way to display the item in a list just shows the name, doesn't show any other attributes of the person. So I want to show you how to actually make use of the other attributes. And this is the very simplest way, although it's a big topic in itself. We're going to introduce something called a for loop. So new keyword for, still started out when we're using it in our question, it starts with the percent symbol. You can use this in a code block too without the percent symbol. And we're creating, now we're, what we're doing is we're saying for every item in our list of children, we want to do something with it. So we're going to be just displaying it to the, the results of the world. So this gets assigned to a new temporary variable that we can choose to name whatever we like. So let's just call it child. I like to use you know, group variables for lists and the singular noun version of it for the temporary variable. It's just easy and clear to read. So for child in my list that's called children, do this thing. So um, what variable are we going to display below here? Anybody? The name and the gender, right? Right. But the I, we put the I in. Right. We do not need to use I. That oh. is the thing that makes it a little bit nicer about DocAssemble than hot docs. Uh -huh. So um, we have a variable. What's the variable name we're going to reference? Child name first. You're just going to do the or child name full? Child. Child. child dot. We could just use child actually because um, a child, an, an individual object will display its own name when you refer to it. And, when it's expecting to be text, it'll translate the person into their name. So it's just an easy, quick way to use this person's name. If you really cared about name.first and name.last separately, like you want to say, um, say Mr. So-and-so or Ms. So-and-so, you could do that. But if you just want to use the whole name of the person, referring to the object itself will always display the whole name. So when you have a group, when I want it, it'll do the name. That's what you're saying. When you take you, you make up a variable 
for a group yeah. in a group and when you repeat yep. that variable it just gives you the name automatically and it's nothing to do with the group it's just anytime you use an individual mm -hmm. it's a special feature and when you're when you create your own classes if you if you ever if you're doing that you can do similar things um you can what you're doing is you're telling it you add a method to the class that says anytime somebody wants to to use this in text and translate this into text you will display this certain thing mm -hmm. okay what i wanted to point out to you though is we created this new variable called child it's a temporary variable right. and to refer to it we can just use we're, we're going to refer to that using that temporary variable name too. But now gender is um, an attribute we have to say mm -hmm. that we're uh, intending to, to display it. It's not automatically displayed. One more thing. I don't know if you probably haven't ever used lists before in, and now we're talking about just like display lists, like a bulleted list. This is how you do that in Markdown. You put a little, um, Asterisk in front and then a space. And we can have a sub item on there. That might be good to know too. Let's say we want to display the, the gender indented. It's going to be two indents or four total spaces. So this is a list with two levels in it. Okay, so new keyword for. It needs to get the end for it at the end, just like the end if. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it lets you iterate through all the items in a list. And it's just good to know that when you're working with lists that you can, that's a way to display them. I can do five, just for this example, we'll stick with two. Cool. Nice. All right. So I just want to show you that. And um, probably should call it a day there. So all of that is gone into a little bit more detail on the blog, and I'll post the slides. And of course, the code snippets are there too. Uh, but I'll put all of these examples on um, GitHub too, under the collections groups. Okay, so I've been recording. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording now.